Okay, so here is a painting that I worked on and I'm just about finished with, and I would like to give it uh, a varnish, a varnish just to finish it off. This is an acrylic painting. You don't have to add varnish to it. I like to because I like the depth of color it creates. I also like that it almost fools the eye into thinking that maybe it's a an oil painting. I don't work in oils anymore. I used to. I might again someday, but I have uh, strictly gone over to the acrylic side and ink. I use acrylic and ink mostly. This is all acrylic and mostly golden acrylics on this. A little bit of Holbein. The, these bright colors here are the Holbein colors. Um, so the products that I have in my studio right now, I have this Mod Podge Gloss Luster spray can and it looks vintage it's just the type of packaging that they use and i don't love this this isn't my favorite product i still keep it here in the studio maybe someone gave this to me i can't remember but you could find this at joann's or michael's i don't know that you'll find it at a professional art store like dick blick or jerry's artorama i'm not sure about that but um here i have a gloss luster a higher end brand is this Liquitex Professional. They even tell you it's Profesh. Again, a gloss varnish. And the reasons I would use a spray varnish, varnish were, versus what I'm going to show you as my favorite varnish is if I had a project that was maybe a collage or maybe I'd used pencils um, or maybe I wasn't sure about the paint that I used. So. Uh, there are a couple of paints on the market I have found that do not like to be varnished with a brush. When you do that, they smear. And then you don't have the same painting you had when you started the process. So um, test out your paints. There is, let's see if I can find it in my kit real fast. But there is one specific green I have. Oh dear. I, I may have put it away because I didn't want to use it anymore, but there is one specific green that I have that when I use a brush and varnish, it smears. And so if I know that I've used that, I will use a spray varnish to lock that stuff down, to lock it down. Or if I have some sort of glitter on here, and I know glitter is so bad for the environment, I no longer purchase glitter, but I have glitter still in my art kit. So when I do use it, I use a spray varnish to lock that shit down. Um, okay, so those are my two uh, spray varnishes. This, again, not the greatest quality. I feel like it makes things sticky. I don't know, it's not my favorite, but I do have it here in the art studio, so I thought I'd show it to you. Again, Liquitex, I think, is a better way to go, but drum roll please, my very, very favorite, and let's see if I can do this without spilling it, is the polycrylic water base. You want this blue, you see the blue here? You want the polycrylic water-based gloss, and here I have clear matte, and that's lovely, but my favorite is the clear gloss. You can see I've used this a lot. This, uh, I've already ripped up the, <laughs> the uh, label pretty badly. This you don't get at your art supply store, folks. You get this at your home supply. So like your Home Depot's, places like that, your shop value home or whatever. Um, and here's, here's a pro tip. Put some painter's tape or something on the lid and then onto the um onto the container so that you have a flip top lid and you want to clean out this reservoir every so often otherwise it gets really built up i'm using a cotton swab just clean out this reservoir um some people put holes i've seen people put holes but this is a plastic ring here it's not metal so i can't hammer into it um so clean that out every once in a while so that you can continue to close your container. So this one here, this is the clear matte. So clear matte versus clear gloss. You can figure that out. One is shiny, one isn't as shiny. So even the matte is a little bit shiny. Um, this is how you want to engage with this stuff. You don't want to shake a shake a shake a shake a. 
Um, if you do, you're gonna get lots of air bubbles, but maybe that's what you're going for. But if you're not going for that, please um, stir. So it's the opposite of James Bond. You want to stir, not shake. So stir, 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 get all the good bits from the bottom. This is pretty thin. You see how thin that is? It's pretty milky. Um, so be mindful of that or use that to your advantage. You could um, really layer this stuff up. So I could imagine pouring it on and then moving your art piece around. Um, here's an, I should probably, I knew that this was dry, this paint palette, but be careful not to get any wet paint in there because then essentially you're tinting that varnish to whatever color, uh, it, it was on your brush. So here's what I like to do. Let me move my, I'm moving my water over just a little bit. Uh, another pro tip, if you are left-handed, keep your water and your brushes on your left side. If you are right-handed, do the opposite. I'm a lefty most of the time, though I sometimes paint with both hands. Keep your coffee on the opposite side of your, not, of your dominant hand slurp so i'm i'm left-handed so i keep my coffee on the right side so i don't accidentally put my brush in my coffee and ruin my delicious coffee okay so here we go so i've got this painting like i said i've, I've just recently finished it and the rule of thumb is that you're supposed to wait three days 72 hours to varnish your acrylic paintings because it takes that time for the paint to cure I don't know. I sometimes get very excited and just want to see what it looks like when it's all shiny. So I don't necessarily do that, but that's what you're supposed to do, folks. Supposed to. Who says? Somebody says. The scientists, the, the paint scientists say that. So I'm just here. I'm off camera. I'm just stirring my gloss, my gloss, because I know I want to make the guitar part very shiny. So I am going to use my gloss paint on the guitar. Um, and I could pour this right on, uh, but I'm going to actually use a brush. So I've got a, a big, soft, fluffy brush here, but I sometimes use a, oh, wait, 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 I'm rethinking this. So I have this sort of really coarse, cheapo depot hasn't been loved uh, up with some soap and water in a while. I think I'm gonna actually use this brush on the guitar because it's gonna create some extra fun texture. And I like that I can sort of fake it out that it looks like this is oil paint versus, versus acrylic. You know, there seems to be a bit still of art snobbery that, are you using acrylics or oils? As though oils are what the professional, the real, the real serious artists use oil. Eh, I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't care if you're painting with boogers. Like, the fact that you're making art makes it important. That, I don't know, that's my jam. So I'm using this brush. You can see, I'm using short, choppy strokes. I'm kind of going in all different directions. I don't know. It's an experiment. And then, and then you know what? I'm going to switch to my soft brush and go on the neck of the guitar and go in one direction. I don't know. And I will do, I'm not sure that it's showing up on camera. Yeah, you can just see right around here. Um... Ooh, it's looking good, it's looking good. And then I'm gonna go over to my matte varnish, my matte varnish with a different brush. So be sure to put your brushes in water right quick after you put varnish uh, on them because ha ha ha, varnish wants to kill your brushes. Like this one, like I now have a hammer instead of a brush and when that happens, uh, I create little characters out of my dead brushes. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm doing fine. Um, okay, so, but may, you could also use this as a tool, right? You could use this to make some hard marks. Um, I almost never throw out a brush. I feel like I can figure out something to do with all brushes. Let's see, where are... 
let me pick up a new clean brush. So it's important that your brushes are clean when you're doing this. Otherwise, any residual paint that you have in your brush is gonna land in your painting. It's gonna land in your painting. So I've got my mat here, I have, I have stirred it. And again, I'm gonna use all kinds of wacky movements here. I learned to use this product from Robert Burridge, one of my painting gurus. I took an awesome class with him. And this is what he uses to, to finish off his really high-end paintings. Um, he's a mixed media artist and he's fantastic. Uh, anyway, so I am, ooh, I got somebody in there. If you have dogs and cats, <laughs> you may want to include that as your supply list, like dog hair in this painting. Um, he uses this and that he, he taught me this technique. He does a, he does something different. He, he's very careful. He puts very serious, um, layers of this varnish on. I like the slapdash technique that I've got going on here. Boop, 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 boop. And again, I'm not sure if the, oh yeah, so the, I think the camera is picking up. You see how shiny it is against the guitar and then it gets less shiny on the background? That is what I was going for. And I've got a little bit of a drip here. So that, all right, so I'm probably off camera. I'm gonna do a couple more uh, coats after this dries down. And then I'm gonna give this painting away to somebody. Um, okay. So I've got a little bit there. So remember, please keep your brushes in water after you've used them. Please keep your brushes clean before you put them in your polycrylic. Cover up your polycrylic when you're done. Otherwise, you get to buy another container of it <laughs> because you've ruined your container. Um, you can put this in between layers. So let's say you um, were working, 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 and then uh, you wanted to sort of build up layers of color, you could use this varnish very much like an oil painter would do and create a, create more layers between the varnish. It's really cool. I love this stuff. Um, I hope you've had a good time. This has been Philomena Jack of Philomena Jack Studio. You can see more about me over at philomenajackstudio.com. You can hang out with my character, Bunzi. There's a link to buy Bunzi's first coloring book. Um, it is really cute. It teaches you how to draw some stuff. It lets you free color and uh, it is awesome. And then for all of my folks over on my Patreon page, thank you so much for helping to support this channel and all of the art stuff that I do. Check out uh, patreon.com slash Philomena Jack Studio to get uh, some free lessons, free downloads, and um, become one of the crew. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have an awesome day. Much love. Bye.